Hi everybody, welcome to today's a special webinar. I'm Terry Ryder, founder of hotspotting.com.au. I'm here today with um, Hotspotting General Manager, Tim Graham. And together we're going to be exploring the subject of how to find affordable property in markets across Australia. What we're seeing as a general theme in markets is a resurgence in buyer activity. We've got through the period of interest rate rises. And despite that, we've seen since the start of 2023 prices rising, we've seen sales activity mount a major recovery in the June quarter. We've now had three months without interest rate rises and we're now transitioning into that uh, more optimistic spring period. Uh, we have also seen uh, just this week, announcements of the latest population data, which shows that uh, net migration into Australia in the year to March 2023 is the highest on record, and we have the highest population growth that Australia's experienced in 20 years. All that would tend to put upward uh, pressure on prices and rents at a time we have shortages of everything. Uh, because of the interest rate rises, um, reducing people's borrowing capacity and, and uh, the recent rises in prices, more and more people are seeking affordable options um, as investors and also high rental yields. And that makes uh, one of our most popular products, the Cheapies with Prospects reports, the city and regional editions, uh, more popular than ever. So today we're going to be firstly having a market overview to bring you up to date with what's happening with prices, with vacancies, with rents across the, mark, uh, across the country, as well as our analysis of sales activity, which is a precursor to, to price growth. Then we're going to be looking at some of the locations across Australia that we think tick all the boxes that uh, people should uh, have on their list when seeking affordable properties in locations with good prospects for growth and safety for investors. And we're going to be looking at some examples of recent sales as well to show you what uh, has sold in some of these markets and for how much. And also allowing plenty of time at the end for your questions, which uh, we would encourage you to uh, type into the chat box or the Q&A panel that you should see in front of you. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, walk you through a uh, presentation and, uh, and then hand over to Hotspotting General Manager, Tim Graham, who will do the second part of the presentation. So what we're seeing um, in our analysis of markets across Australia is uh, a recovery. Very few exceptions. There's one or two places that haven't yet got on board with the recovery theme that we're seeing. But we analyse sales activity every three months. So we're looking for patterns of growth, patterns of consistency, also patterns of decline to give us forewarning of what might happen with prices in uh, different uh, parts of Australia. We analyse uh, that sales activity data for every town and suburb in the country. Now, just as a precursor to the information I'm going to present telling, telling us what's actually happening in markets, um, I'd like to start by telling us what we were told to expect by the, the notorious senior economists working for the major banks who have a bit of a track record over the last few years, in fact, probably uh, for, for many years, in getting it horribly wrong with their forecasts and prices. And they've done it again this year rather emphatically. At the start of this year, as usual, the big four banks put out their, their forecasts of what they expected to happen with Australian property prices in 2023, and they're all expecting major decline. I would point out that in my four decades in uh, analysing and writing about real estate across Australia, I've never seen price decline as big as this at any point in the past 40 years. But that's what we're told to expect this year. Prices falling by 15%, according to Commonwealth Bank, 20%. Now, what we've actually seen is prices have actually risen uh, across the country, um, not boom time price growth, but certainly very steady, moderate, sustainable price growth. Um, a mistake that the bank economists make is they think everything is about what's happening with interest rates. What we believe at Hotspotting, there are other more powerful forces in the market, um, including uh, supply and demand is probably the biggest single factor. We have uh, rising demand, and I've just mentioned how much we've seen in terms of population growth in the last 12 months in Australia, record levels of population growth, very high levels of migration coming into the country at a time we have shortages of everything. And that's a, a more important factor in determining what will happen with markets than um, what's happening with interest rates. So according to a couple of major sources of 
uh, property price data, SQM research and prop track. Um, we're seeing pretty good growth in, uh, in the last 12 months, despite everything, despite um, interest rates rising regularly up until June. Um, in most of the markets across Australia, not all of them, you'll notice there's some differences there. The green um, bar is SQM research, the blue one is prop track. They all have different methodologies, so they come up with different numbers. What they do agree about is that Sydney has been rising quite steadily, that Brisbane also, Perth and Adelaide have had good growth. Um, there is some disagreement about what's happening in Melbourne, uh, Canberra and Hobart, um, but overall on average, they both have recorded growth in Australian house prices in the last 12 months. Switching, um, comparing um, the findings of Core Logic and PropTrack um, from the last 12 months, the prop track data tends to be, again, more, more positive than, than core logic. Uh, but they do agree that, um, that Perth and Adelaide have been strong, that Sydney has been recording good price growth. Um, but prop track generally has more positive data. And again, it's that a difference in methodology and sometimes a different in difference in philosophy that results in um, what you might think is factual data actually producing different results. Uh, from the different uh, sources of research. Um, comparing what's happened in the past 12 months, which what's happened in the year to date, is quite instructive because what you can see in a number of cities is that in the past 12 months, prices are down, uh, still lower than they were 12 months ago, but prices have risen since the start of 2023. What that tells us is that the latter part of 2022, there was price decline in some of these cities, but since the start of 2023, They've turned it around and now prices are starting to rise. So we've seen good performance from Sydney. Melbourne's starting to perform better. Brisbane's still a little bit lower than it was 12 months ago, but it has had growth since the start of this year. Perth and Adelaide are the two cities that have been steady right through that, that uh, down period of 2022. Um, Canberra and Hobart not doing so well. Um, year to date, according to core logic, prices for houses are up about 5% although they're still slightly lower than they were 12 months ago. The trend overall is very positive. Units, um, increasingly we're interested in what's happening with unit markets because we see growing demand in, uh, in markets across Australia, particularly in the, the big city markets, people preferring apartments for, for lifestyle and for affordability. And again, we're seeing um, in many of our cities um, since the start of this year, um, that's the, the, the blue bar on the graph. Uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, all showing pretty solid growth in median prices for apartments. And the national average is 3 or 4% since the start of the year. And just um, comparison between the price growth uh, for houses and units in each of the cities, according to Core Logic. Um, you know, the national average down the bottom of that graph, um, houses are, are the, the green bar, apartments are the blue. Um, houses slightly here, but only slightly. Both, uh, both forms of dwellings have, have shown solid growth this year. In Brisbane, apartments have actually shown more growth than houses. Melbourne, apartments have outperformed houses. Uh, Adelaide is um, slightly ahead for apartments. Perth slightly behind, Sydney slightly behind. But it's interesting to see just how much of a challenge that apartments are mounting towards houses because of that uh, long-standing dominant paradigm of real estate that houses on land show better price growth than do apartments. Uh, we feel that that paradigm is starting to change because more and more people are opting for apartments for lifestyle and affordability reasons. Okay, so now a quick, quick look at our price predictor index, which we publish every quarter. We analyze sales activity for every town and suburb across the country because we believe patterns with sales activity, which means by demand, is a precursor to what might happen with prices. And what we saw in uh, the latest analysis uh, for the spring edition of the price predict in index was major revival in sales activity across the country. Seven out of 10 locations now have strong sales activity, uh, which is a big improvement on the previous quarter. And we're now seeing growth momentum in most parts of the country. The only real exceptions amongst the major markets of Australia are Darwin and Canberra. Big, big recovery in the big cities. Uh, previously, what we've seen is that 
um, smaller cities like Adelaide and Perth had been leading through that difficult period. And now we're seeing the big cities, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, bouncing back quite strongly. And we now, in these terms, rank Sydney as the number one market. Again, we note that there's a rising demand for apartments and markets where apartments are more dominant than houses, like the inner city areas of Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane, we're seeing rising demand. And these are now some of the strongest markets anywhere in Australia. Regions continue to be strong. Um, they have been very solid performers right throughout 2022 and into 2023, but we've seen a major resurgence in uh, buy demand, particularly in the regional areas of the eastern states. Markets like the Gold Coast have had a big revival in demand in, in our latest quarterly analysis. So what we think that means is that the level of price growth, which to this point in 2023 has been steady but moderate, we think the rate of price growth in many markets will pick up because we've seen a big upsurge in demand um, during the winter months and that we've now had three months without interest rate rises and we're now coming into that more optimistic spring period. Um, so we think that's going to translate into higher levels of price growth than we've seen so far in 2023. Vacancies, as we all know, are extremely low. Uh, no respite for tenants in sight. Uh, the politicians at a state and federal level don't really have any solutions. They tend to make decisions which would be uh, apt to make the situation worse, uh, not better. So according to ESCOM research, the national vacancy rate currently is 1.2%. It was 1.3% uh, in July, so it's, it's contracted a little bit. Uh, some of the capital cities are below 1%, um, one or two a little bit higher, uh, but the picture is uh, very tight vacancies in all the capital cities. Just looking at it slightly differently, Prop tax figures, similar, a little bit different, but similar. Their national vacancy rate is 1.1%. Again, they have Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide well below 1% uh, with their vacancy rates. And throughout the regional markets, uh, we're seeing a similar picture. The regional average is the same as the capital city average vacancy rate of 1.1% across the regions uh, with regional South Australia and regional Queensland, the tightest markets, but they're all pretty tight. Anything below 3% is tending towards shortage. Below 2% is tight. Below 1% is a crisis uh, from the viewpoint of tenants. Uh, but um, creates good conditions for property investors to get into the market. And uh, as a consequence of very tight uh, vacancy rates, we're seeing rents rising very strongly, particularly in the biggest cities. Uh, These are the the annual growth in house rentals, according to ESCM research. Um, some of the smaller cities have actually not showing um, in the last 12 months um, any level of growth. In fact, Canberra and Hobart are down a little. Um, I believe this is because um, these markets have had low vacancies and rising rentals for quite a number of years and have uh, reached the point of a ceiling um, in terms of just how much the market can afford to pay I think the bigger cities like Melbourne and Sydney, there's a greater capacity for, for tenants to pay higher rents than is the case in some of the smaller cities. But the national average uh, in the uh, 12 months to September is uh, that house rents have risen 15%. And for apartments, the national average is 17%. So it's another indicator where, where apartments are, are challenging um, the dominance of houses. So apartment rents have nationally risen a little bit more in house rents, possibly because apartments tend to be cheaper and more and more people are, are directing their demand to that cheaper product. Uh, but Sydney and Perth have both had 20% rises in their, uh, their unit rents in the past 12 months. And again, the smaller capital cities um, are a little bit more subdued um, than have been the bigger cities. Okay, so against that background of um, fairly optimistic data from the viewpoint of property investors um, in terms of prices, rentals, vacancies. We're now going to look at uh, some of the locations we think are worthy of consideration uh, by investors, um, locations that offer affordability um, as well as good prospects for growth. Tim Graham, um, we, we've developed this formula we call the empirical formula. Perhaps you could uh, just, just walk us through what that actually means. 
Yeah. Um, well, firstly, yeah, thanks, Terry. Um, um, hello to everybody uh, who's listening today. Um, just before we jump into the empirical form, I was just going to um, uh, have a little bit of a look back on some of the statistics you just talked about, Terry. Some of the uh, trends that we're seeing around the country are quite fascinating. I can tell you, in my uh, time in real estate, which is certainly not as long as yours, but I certainly haven't seen uh, any sort of unit markets like we're in at the moment. And I think that's um, something that for a lot of investors, they've probably ruled out uh, apartments, um, certainly in the, the years past 2017. Um, a lot of people have sort of shied away from investing in apartments, but we're really seeing uh, a bit of a, a change in the, the dynamic of the apartment markets now with less supply. I think supply is probably the big word of the day, isn't it? It's affecting all markets around the country. Well, that's right. Um, and we're seeing more and more data come through showing that um, we're not you know, building enough new dwellings, um, apartments as well as houses. Um, I saw a graph earlier today showing uh, building approvals in Australia, both for apartments and houses, and they've been trending very sharply downwards mm. uh, for both types of dwellings since the middle of 2021, at a time when, um, as, as we've just um, remarked earlier in the presentation, we've got um, record migration in the past 12 months into Australia yeah. and the highest population growth that Australia's recorded in the past 20 years. Uh, largely driven by that uh, migration of new residents coming into Australia. So we've got two competing forces there. We've got limited supply, falling supply at a time when we've got rising demand. Yeah. And that would be apt to put upward pressure on both rentals and uh, and sale prices. Yeah, it's a fascinating time. Um, so moving on to the empirical formula. So we've developed this formula because um, for investors, um, it, we need to understand that a suburb that you invest in is likely to do 80% of the heavy lifting for you. The balance of 20%, the product that you buy within it. So obviously with um, the suburb doing 80% of the heavy lifting, the location that you invest in is incredibly important. So for investors, we've developed this uh, formula, which we've um, you know, developed over uh, many years to sort of show um, a, a formula that you can use in identifying the best locations for an investment property. So uh, we call it the empirical formula because by definition, empirical evidence or study relies on practical experience rather than theories. So what that means is if we apply a formula that's been working and we uh, rinse and repeat that formula, we should get a similar result. And what we do um, there is we, we start with the local economy. Um, we believe that real estate markets uh, are driven by local economies. We often hear about the Australian property market, but we have thousands of um, real estate markets within Australia. So it's really important that we look at the local economy and what's driving that local economy. So the local economy, uh, first and foremost, must be strong and diverse. And we've got to look at a, a market size of uh, a minimum of 50 house sales per uh, month, which, uh, sorry, per, per 12 months, which mightn't sound like a lot, but when you think about it, uh, obviously there's an LGA, a local government area, and then there's, there could be multiple suburbs within that. So when we look at um, uh, area or markets around Australia, we typically are looking at LGAs. So one suburb within an LGA uh, might be slightly different to another, but generally we're looking at LGAs and what's driving that local economy within it. The next is the population. So local uh, government area ideally would have a population uh, of 15,000 or more. Uh, and a lot of the time when we look at that, there might be a, um, an audience just outside of that uh, immediate population. Um, some of the areas we'll talk about today, like uh, Mount Gambier, for instance, might only have 20,000, but it draws on uh, areas much larger than that. But we want to see a minimum population size of at least 15,000. With infrastructure, we need to see good existing amenities and also evidence of major new developments coming to the area. The rental market, we're looking for low vacancies, which is pretty easy to do in, Australia, in terms of Australian markets at the moment. Um, as Terry just uh, pointed out, nationally, we're, um, we're well below 2%. Um, but obviously with low vacancies, that's likely to put um, uh, pressure on rents to go upwards. So it's important that we're looking for locations now and into the future that remain uh, low vacancy. Uh, we're looking at increasing employment opportunities. So that's evidence of job growth locally. So that could be, you know, Amazon moving into the area or big employers moving into the area. That's always a good sign. Uh, capital growth, obviously strong potential for capital growth within the next five years. So we've seen markets for many years where we've seen, um, you know, evidence of, you know, big industry moving to town, big infrastructure. 
But um, if they're earmarked for 10 years down the track and buying today, you could be sitting there without growth for a long time. So there is a bit of a measurement that we're looking at to ensure that these things are actually in, in active mode. So we're not looking at proposals for five to 10 years. These are um, uh, jobs coming to the area immediately and infrastructure projects well and truly underway. The next one is affordability. So we're looking at suburbs that have got a median house price uh, below 600,000. And then lastly, we're looking at low risk. So we avoid volatile markets, ones that are you know, propped up by resources or uh, tourism, as an example. So Terry, I'll pop back in um, at the end of your uh, presentation, actually put some real real estate into these markets so we can see some, uh, some real evidence of properties that have been selling in these markets where we've used the empirical formula. Yeah, thanks, Tim. So we've got a, a series of locations across the country we think uh, fit the empirical formula. They offer affordability, uh, safety, uh, above average yields, pro good prospects for growth. And I'm going to get, move through them pretty quickly because we have a number of examples and we want to allow plenty of time uh, within the hour for people to, to uh, give us their questions. So starting in Queensland, central Queensland, Rockhampton, um, certainly in terms of population and forecast population growth, it sort of ticks all the boxes for us. Very low vacancy rates, um, the different postcodes in Rockhampton, um, some of them are below 1%, um, the highest is about 1.2%. High level of affordability, there's still suburbs well below 300,000 in, in Rockhampton, uh, ranging up to in the 400,000s. Very good rental yields in, in the cheaper suburbs, as high as 8% in terms of uh, median rental yields. Good long-term growth rate, but what we really like about these locations, and we look for, for this factor in all the locations, Lots of major projects happening in the market, infrastructure spending like the Rockhampton Ring Road, um, the Shellwater uh, Bay Training Centre, and billions of dollars of uh, renewable energy projects in the Rockhampton area. So it ticks most of the boxes um, on our empirical formula, a market that's got great potential for growth and offers affordability and above average rental yields. We really like Toowoomba, uh, west of Brisbane, one of the um, well, it's the, the largest inland regional city in Australia. It's the, the largest city um, inland behind Canberra. Um, substantial population forecast to keep growing. Very low vacancies. Good, good affordability. Uh, quite a difference in price ranges across the different suburbs of the city of Toowoomba, but uh, as low as 400,000. Good rental yields, good long-term growth rate. Lots happening, very influential infrastructure happening here. Uh, the, the new Wellcam Airport working in conjunction with the Inland Rail Link Hub that's coming to Toowoomba. Uh, lots of big businesses establishing or planning to establish a presence there. Um, those two pieces of transport infrastructure really do put Toowoomba on the map. And um, some in international businesses are planning to set up because of those uh, two pieces of infrastructure. Uh, Townsville in the north of Queensland, again, a very strong regional economy, lots of diversity there, lots of strength growing, creating jobs, high level of affordability, some really good rental yields available, um, and good long-term growth rates. And again, lots of infrastructure spending underway and more in planning. You do need to be mindful that this is in the, the tropical north, so um, because of that, insurance companies tend to charge much higher insurance premiums for markets like uh, Townsville. Gladstone in central Queensland, um, a city that um, has recovered strongly from um, a major downturn that occurred sort of 18 years ago. Good affordability, um, a growing regional city, very important export port. Perhaps the, the weakness that's been in this market is a, a, a reliance of the economy on the resources sector, which introduces an element of risk, but the, the economy is diversifying through um, other types of investment that are coming, including alternative energy developments, which um, are attracting multi-billion dollar investment to Gladstone. So uh, we see that economy strengthening and diversifying as a result of that. Gatton, uh, a place that many people watching might be asking the question, well, where on earth is that? Never heard of it. Um, the Lockyer Valley, um, halfway between Ipswich on the uh, southwestern fringe of Brisbane and Toowoomba, I've just mentioned, is a strong uh, regional city. Um, it's a 
a big uh, agricultural economy. It's uh, got uh, proximity to the major uh, RAF base in Amberley, and it's also got a university campus. So there's some diversity in the economy, good level of affordability in the in Gatton and neighbouring towns, good rental yields, very low vacancies, and um, some influential infrastructure, as you can see listed there. Ipswich, uh, just turning to the uh, the greater Brisbane metropolitan area, not far away from Gatton is, is the city of Ipswich and the, the southwestern portion of the, the greater Brisbane area um, has been one of the most affordable parts of the, the Brisbane market. Recent price growth means it's not quite as cheap as it was, but there are still uh, good suburbs where you can buy around about the 400, the 450,000 mark, suburbs like Goodna, um, on the, uh, the eastern end of the city of Ipswich. Um, it includes a number of notable uh, master plan communities, including Springfield, uh, lots of uh, infrastructure um, activity happening as well, and big business investment, a lot of jobs in Ipswich. Most of the people who live in Ipswich are, are working in their local area because there's some very big employment nodes. So it offers affordable housing, good infrastructure, jobs, and... Um, it's one of the, the fastest growing uh, populations anywhere in Queensland. Turning to South Australia, Adelaide has been one of the best performing markets over the, the past couple of years, continues to be a very steady and consistent market, um, underpinned by an economy, economy which is growing in importance. Um, and it, of course, it's very affordable city, half the prices of uh, Melbourne, less than half the prices of Sydney. Um, population is growing, the economy is strengthening. We know that vacancy rates are low right across Australia, but nowhere are they lower than in Adelaide. Um, they're so common to find postcodes where the vacancy rate is 0 0.1, 0 0.3%, just ridiculous. And that's putting big pressure on, on rentals in Adelaide. As the figures showed that I presented earlier, Adelaide's one of those places where rents are rising very strongly. Um, median prices in this particular part of Adelaide, up in the north, the city of Salisbury, uh, still suburbs of median prices in the 300,000s, rental yields above 5%, good long-term growth rates, and there's lots of employment nodes up there. The big uh, Edinburgh defence base is one of them, some huge commercial industrial estates providing jobs, lots of investment in new residential, and lots of reasons why this is a place that's going to deliver growth. Uh, as well as that affordability. A little bit uh, further north on the northern fringe of Adelaide, Gawler, the city of Gawler, uh, the gateway to the Barossa Valley. So it offers lifestyle, affordability, um, improved connectivity to central Adelaide through um, some major road infrastructure like the Northern Connector. The Gawler rail line has recently been electrified, so um, transport links have improved. Um, big jobs nodes up in the north of Adelaide, as I said. Um, easy access to lifestyle factors like the Barossa Valley Wine District and um, some big investment going into uh, infrastructure as well as uh, new residential uh, like the St. Eve's uh, Master Plan community. In regional South Australia, this uh, doesn't get a lot of attention, but uh, it keeps... Um, punching above its weight in terms of uh, price growth. Uh, and it's a couple of good uh, regional, small regional cities worthy of note. Mount Gambia is one of them near the border with uh, Victoria, um, population of just under 30,000, forecast to keep growing, low vacancies, affordable housing, good rental yields. It's been a good performer and there's plenty happening in the business and investment uh, side of things, um, upgrades to the local highway. Um, there's quite a bit of uh, renewable energy development in that area. And the timber industry is also big and that investment is creating jobs and economic activity in the Mount Gambia market. Um, Murray Bridge, um, another um, regional, small regional city of South Australia. If you're up in the Adelaide Hills, uh, you keep driving. The Adelaide Hills are quite an expensive market, great place to to buy if you can afford it, but if you can't afford it, keep going a little bit further and you come to Murray Bridge on the Murray River and uh, the median price there is 350,000 and vacancy is almost zero. 
um, and there's plenty of investment going into uh, local industry like the meat processing plant, there's some solar farm projects, um, bridge and road upgrades, um, and it has the largest safari park anywhere outside of Africa. Interesting fun fact about Murray Bridge. Turning to, oh no, sorry, we're still in South Australia, one more, Port Augusta. Um, perhaps one that um, might tick all the boxes in our empirical evidence, but it's worth, worthy of note because it's, uh, it's a place in transition and it's a very strategically located um, town. It's um, sometimes marketed as being at the crossroads of Australia um, when you're sort of heading from the eastern states out, out to, uh, to Western Australia. Uh, with um, major road links to Perth and north to Darwin. Um, it's a seaport, it's a railway junction town. And, and in the news this week, major, major investment uh, not far from Port Augusta in the export port at Port Benython heading down towards Wyala, which is expected to attract billions and billions of dollars in business and investment. That's going to be influential for Port Augusta, which previously had an economy based on coal-fired power stations, which have been closed down. What's uh, replacing them is some very, very big renewable energy projects, many billions of dollars worth of that happening. And that's um, creating um, rising demand. This market, still very affordable, median house price 200,000, yields around 8%. Um, worthy of consideration, but perhaps got a higher level of risk uh, because its economy has been so reliant um, up to this point on the resources sector. Now, turning to Western Australia, Perth has been flavour of the year for many investors. A lot of people are wanting a piece of Perth. It continues to be the most affordable capital city in the country other than Darwin. Um, and I think it's um, still got plenty of growth left and it hasn't really had the level of price growth that um, it has the potential to achieve given that it is coming from a low base in terms of pricing, it's getting so much demand from home buyers and investors. Armadale, down in the south, Armadale is both a, a suburb and a local government area. Um, high level of affordability, very low vacancies, uh, population already above 100,000, but forecast to reach 150,000 uh, in the next couple of decades. And um, lots of influential infrastructure activity happening there. In proximity, there's some very major employment zones um, not far from Armadale. Another part of the, the Perth market, a little bit more expensive, a little bit closer to the centre of Perth, but one that's worthy of consideration because it's it's well located, it's got great infrastructure, um, it's got lots of green spaces, it's got um, pretty good quality of housing and prices in the 400,000s and 500,000s with very low vacancies and um, influence from some major um, transport infrastructure, including the, uh, the the train, the upgrades to the train network, new train stations through there, um, and uh, a whole lot more happening. It's got uh, Perth's largest shopping centre, amongst other parts of its uh, infrastructure mix. So it's one worthy of consideration, we think. Hitting outside of Perth, Geraldton is a regional market that we, we like a lot. We think it's got potential to show really good growth going forward because there's a lot of investment uh, being targeted on Geraldton, which is the largest um, um, population centre north of Perth and it's Western Australia's second largest export port. Um, it's attracting investment both from the private sector and from the state government and the, the port is being expanded to the tune of $300 million and uh, it's very affordable. Some suburbs, medium price is still in the 200,000s. Uh, so potential to buy affordably in a market with potential for growth uh, with vacancies very, very low. Bunbury heading south from Perth, um, also an important export port city. Um, I think the largest regional city um, in Western Australia, um, population approaching 100,000. Again, very low vacancies, some good level of affordability, and lots happening in terms of investment in business and infrastructure, including the Bunbury Outer Ring Road, which is over a billion dollars of investment. 
a lot of these places have investment in their hospitals. You, you might note um, listed in most of these locations as multi-million um, dollar investment in, in hospitals. It's a, it's a big factor for markets right across the country. Um, in New South Wales, um, harder to find, I suppose, um, affordable regional markets with good growth for prospect, good prospects for growth, but certainly Tamworth, um, famous for its as the country music capital, but there's a whole lot more happening there. It's being um, invested in by the state government and private enterprises, the regional freight hub, also a very important renewable energy zone. Again, its hospitals being upgraded. There's lots of investment um, in various business sectors in Tamworth, and there are suburbs with median prices still in the 300,000s, ranging up to the 500,000s. So this one's um, also highly worthy of consideration. Wagga Wagga, very strong regional economy. We like the diversity there. It's got agriculture, defence. Um, it's got both a, an army base and a RAF base, and those can be really influential in generating economic activity and tourism. Um, so big infrastructure spending happening there as well. Medium prices in various suburbs ranging from the 300s to the, the 500,000s, although some of the more expensive areas go right up to the 700,000s. Uh, long term growth rates are really strong, so around about 10% a year over, over the past decade, which is a pretty good uh, performance for a regional city and a population which is currently around 70,000. Protected to just keep on growing. Um, Musselbrook, um, part of the, the Hunter region, um, its population is, is only about 16,000, but it's part of the, the broader Hunter region with a, a much larger pop and growing population and with good connections to Newcastle and its export port. Uh, lots of diversity in the economy here, agriculture, wine, horses, resources. Um, it's a lot happening in the Hunter region of which Musselbrook is one of the more affordable uh, towns and um, very low vacancies again, good long term growth rate worthy of consideration. Into Victoria, um, the, the key regional cities of Victoria, like Ballarat, Bendigo, Geelong, um, still great markets to invest in, but not as affordable as they were. They've had some exceptional price growth in the last three, four, five years. Harder to find those, those really um, affordable purchases. Um, so people wanting to buy in the three and four hundred thousands will find it a bit harder. But places like Shepparton provide uh, good alternatives. Um, one of the, the food bowls of Australia, lots happening in infrastructure, including the Shepparton Bypass $1.3 billion project, hospital upgrades, rail upgrades. There's a lot happening there. Um, pricing from the three hundred thousands to the four hundred thousands, very low vacancies, good long term growth rates. Lots of reasons to consider Shepparton as a, a place to invest affordably uh, with prospects for growth. Mildura, um, another affordable, important city um, in the uh, northwestern part of uh, the state of Victoria. Um, good long term growth rates there, but still very affordable, good rental yields, very low vacancies, plenty happening in, in terms of investment and in infrastructure. Um, including the local hospital, big project there. Um, lots of solar power projects because they get a lot of sun out in Mildura. And um, as in connection with that, a $1.8 billion energy connect project. And all these things are important because they generate so much economic activity. They create jobs so people come and live in these, these areas to work in those big projects. And that creates demand for real estate. And finally, um, well, Tribe Valley, um, east of Melbourne, um, towns like Terrelgan, Morwell, uh, Maui, Newbra, um, they've had some excellent price growth. Look, look at those long-term growth rates. That's growth rates, not growth rats. A little right. bit of a typo there. But 13 to 14% per year, um, that's exceptional. Some of the best in the country. But still, because they were coming from such a low base, still median prices in these towns, in the 300s and 400,000s. Um, yes, I probably um, just looking at, I should have spent a bit more time editing that slide, but what we're telling is vacancies are sort of uh, well below 2%. Uh, 
high level of affordability. The population is forecast to keep on growing. It's an, you know, an affordable lifestyle alternative to Greater Melbourne, but not far from Greater Melbourne. And there's lots happening in terms of hospital investment, upgrades to the rail link, lots of alternative energy developments happening, replacing some of the old industries that used to exist out there, such as coal-fired power stations. So a quick trip around the country, um, exploring some of those uh, markets, both capital city and regional, that offer affordability um, and good growth prospects. Uh, all places where they're of consideration, all places that fit our empirical formula. So, Tim, you're going to um, now show us some, some of the, the properties that have, have recently sold in the area to give an indication of uh, what you're getting for how much. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, for a lot of us who might be watching today or sitting in a, a capital city where our median price uh, could be a million dollars or more, when you start seeing median prices in the 200 to 400,000, you think, Christ, what sort of real estate can I buy for that? Now, just because our um, we're, we're targeting places that might have a lower median price doesn't mean we necessarily have to spend 200 to 300,000 um, to buy some real estate. We can still buy good real estate in these markets in the 400s to you know 600 mark um, that are still going to benefit from uh, the local infrastructure, the strong local economies, but it's also going to give you the ability as an investor to get strong rental growth. Uh, strong capital growth and, and a really good appeal uh, when you go to sell in the future as well. So I thought today what we might do, I've gone through and put some, some real real estate um, some previous sales from real estate in these markets to give everybody a bit of an indication of some properties that you could um, be targeting in, in some of these locations. So um, like, like we always say, we never really recommend that people go out and try to do these things themselves. Uh, if you don't have experience as a property investor and you don't have experience in you know, targeting uh, the right investments, that's where you should be leaning on people with local knowledge. So um, we always recommend we've got a panel of partners page on our website. If you're looking for uh, people that can help you identify these locations, by all means, jump on there and reach out to some of these companies because uh, you will find that there are experts that can help you with this so that you're not sort of hunting around blind. But um, without further ado, I'll talk to you a little bit more around how I've selected these um, uh, sales history. So I just go to realestate.com. And for me personally, I'm looking at properties when I'm helping uh, clients buy properties interstate, we're not looking for properties that necessarily need a lot of renovations. They might need some small cosmetic changes, liquor, uh, liquor paint, changing of some lighting and things like that. But we're also um, looking for properties that we know that we can go and um, uh, settle on quickly, get rent through the door straight away. So you will notice a bit of a theme with the properties that I've selected in here, which are three or four bedroom houses. Uh, that have either had a uh, renovation or don't. Uh, you're on mute, I think, Tim. What what happened? <laughs> I don't know. You froze and then you disappeared. Um, but uh, fortunately, you're back. Um, I'm, I really. Not, uh, not where sure. do we? Where did you lose me? Um, you were just starting to um, get into this uh, property. Yes, that's right. All right we'll, we'll push on. I'll, I'll do this one again. So this is a, a four bedroom, two bathroom, double car garage in Rockhampton. It transacted at 373000 and getting $500 a week in rent. Um, the suburb itself had 7.1% growth in the last 12 months and the current vacancy rate is only 1%. Moving on to Toowoomba. So we had one here, 31 Wellcamp Street, Newtown, four bedroom, two bathroom, double car garage recently renovated. It also has a pool uh, nearby to the existing uh, hospital in Toowoomba. It transacted at 565000 and getting $600 a week in rent. Um, Newtown had 11.5% capital growth in the last 12 months and current vacancy rate of 0.6%. In Gladstone, uh, 38 Lamandra Street in, on Boyne, Boyne Island uh, was sold for $460,000, getting $520 a week in rent. Uh, past 12 months, you saw 9.8% growth and vacancy rate at the moment, 1.9%. You'll notice there's a bit of a theme on the land sizes here as well, 610 uh, metre square block. So, you know, you're getting very good value for money in these regions. 86 Golf Links Drive in Gatton. Um, we're looking at 530,000 for uh, this property and it's getting $550 per week. 
uh, past 12 months, 13.3% and 0.9% as the current vacancy rate. In Ipswich, uh, in Leichhardt, we had a property there uh, sell in July for $470,000. Uh, it's getting $495 per week. Again, four bed, two bath, double car garage, reasonably modern home, so uh, nothing to spend, ready to tenant straight away. Uh, past 12 months growth, 9.5% and current vacancy rate of 0.8%. In Salisbury in uh, South Australia, four bed, two bath. It says on here one uh, car. It's quite common in um, Adelaide that you'll see a lot of narrow blocks where you'll get only the one car in. This one's actually a big block, but it's only got the one carport. Uh, it transacted 538,000 and it's getting $570 per week. The past 12 months growth, 17.4% for Salisbury and current vacancy rate of only 0.2%. So incredibly tight rental market. It's interesting when we think about these rental markets and showing the vacancy rates right now, those yields, as everyone would agree, is quite strong. But because of the uh, upward pressure that the vacancy rates are putting on rent, it's not, a, not, uncom not uncommon at all to be getting, you know, maybe five, five and a half percent um, uh, rental yield upon settling in this now. But over the next couple of years, in, it's incredible how quickly the rental yields can jump up. Hmm. Uh, so heading uh, further north in South Australia, Goula, uh, a four bed, two bath, double car garage in Evanston Gardens, uh, sold for 508,750, uh, running at 520 per week. Past 12 months growth, 15.4% and current vacancy rates of 0.4. Mount Gambia, uh, second largest city in South Australia, a bit more of a regional center. Um, 138 uh, North Terrace was a three bed, two bath and single car garage. Sold for $440,000, uh, rental price of $470 per week. Now, it's not uncommon at all for you to get uh, good pieces of real estate much lower than this. Uh, I've seen some um, uh, some good purchases there, um, you know, slightly older properties that have been renovated that are 299 or early 300s uh, that you can get, you know, 6% rental yield on as well. Uh, very large block sizes and obviously a really strong local economy and tourism thriving there. Um, I don't know exactly what the future of uh, short-term accommodation looks like, but um, certainly in Adelaide, the uh, SRE in, in Mount Gambia, there's been a very strong short-term accommodation uh, in Mount Gambia. Very, very promising market for um, you know Air, Airbnb and the likes. Past 12 months there, 11.4% and current vacancy rate of 0.7%. In Murray Bridge, uh, this three bed, two bath, double car garage sold for 370,000, renting at $470 per week. Past 12 months uh, growth, 21%. You know, we, we, Terry, you uh, were looking at some of the stats for the capital cities earlier um, in the presentation where, um, you know, over the 12 months, it said in some capital cities, we went backwards. So to be getting 21% in the uh, same time frame is pretty remarkable. Indeed. Uh, Current vacancy rate of Murray Bridge is 0.5%. In Port Augusta, this four bed, two bath, single car, well, it says single car, but as you can see by the picture, it's actually a double, um, but that was $320,000 and uh, we're currently renting at $420 per week, quite a modern home. Uh, part, past 12 months growth for Port Augusta, 21.7% and again, 0.7% vacancy. Heading across to Western Australia in Armadale, this um, property transacted for 510,000, a four bed, two bath, double car garage, quite modern. Um, sale price of 510,000, but renting at 565. This is a market where new builds are, are quite affordable as well. So uh, not only could you be uh, getting into this market around this sort of price, but you can be buying in um, a, a new build property there, which would be giving you obviously the higher depreciation and often um, you know, higher rental demand as well. So we're seeing in this particular market in Western Australia, um, you know, rental yields on the new properties are actually very, very high. Past 12 months growth, 13.2% and vacancy rates 0.4%. So incredibly tight here too. In Canning, this is actually in Canning Vale, a three bed, two bath and single car uh, property, a little bit older, 465,000, but renting for over $500 per week. Past 12 months growth, 7.4% and a tight 0.4% uh, vacancy. Uh, I'm going to quickly touch on uh, land size here as well. Um, a lot of people, you know, the old uh, adage that the, the larger the land component, you know, the better you'll do with capital growth. I think when you look at some of these markets, important not just to look at the, uh, the land size of the house that you're looking at, but look at the properties that are around it. 
If you're buying into an area, and Adelaide's a perfect example of this, it's not uncommon at all to get very small blocks. So whilst we might be used to in some markets buying with a 400 plus meter square block, I wouldn't shy away from smaller blocks if that's the, the suburb normal. OK, it's a bit different if you're buying into an area where you've got lots of large blocks and then this is a very small 200 meter square block. But if it's quite common to have um, properties that are, are that size, you're, you're going to still um, trend in line with the rest of the suburb. So I wouldn't shy away from that if it's um, giving you a, um, a very good yield. Um, and obviously, if we're looking at other um, properties around the area that are trending the same, it's, uh, it's certainly worth considering. Uh, so heading on to Geraldton, um, we're looking at a $310,000 sale here, three bed, one bath, single car, and getting $390 per week. This was an interesting one. Geraldton obviously went back by um, 3% in the last 12 months. But if you're looking at the uh, last you know, uh, average of 10 years, we've been floating around the 5%. And as Terry mentioned earlier, the reason it still meets our uh, empirical formula is because of what's coming to the area. So uh, looking at Bunbury, this four bed, uh, single uh, bathroom and double car garage is 475, nice and close to the beach, running at $530 per week, 3.5% uh, growth over the last 12 months and a 0.5% vacancy. But again, the future outlook for Bunbury is very strong. The music capital of Australia, Tamworth, the four bed, two bath, uh, three cars, 436,500, uh, renting at $470 per week with 12 months growth of 7.5% and a vacancy rate of 1.4. Into Wagga Wagga, uh, four bed, three bath, double car garage. This uh, transacted for 500,000 in Karingal, uh, rental price of $530 per week. Past 12 months, 10.2% growth and 0.7% vacancy at the moment. Large 797 metre square block on that one too. In the Musselbrook in the Hunter Valley, four bedroom, two bathroom, double car garage, sold for 505,000, getting $530 per week. Massive 1,200 metre square block. Uh, past 12 months, 8.1% uh, growth and 0.6% uh, vacancy rate right now. Heading into Victoria, where we do tend to struggle a little bit more with yield. Um, I'm sure in the background, we can probably hear some uh, celebrations going on with uh, the news breaking that our Premier has just resigned. Hopefully, uh, we can see some... Uh, some. <laughs> I can see you smirking there, Terry. I, I think you might add something to do with him having to resign in the first place. Uh, but he, um, yeah, obviously, um, for Victoria, we have been a little bit gun shy uh, with the investments here, uh, given we have seen some increases to stamp duty and some other um, taxes. But in a lot of the regions, we're set, starting to see some very strong price growth and um, rental growth, which is quite reassuring. So in the, the suburb of Chichura, just outside of Shepparton, we saw a three bed, two bath, double car garage uh, sell for 500000 uh, getting $515 per week. So incredibly strong yield in comparison to a lot of other uh, locations around Victoria and a really good size block too. This is a, a, another area that um, you know could be worthwhile considering for new build as well. Um, you know, there's quite a bit of land uh, available out there, but you're getting very so strong rental yields on the new builds there. Past 12 months growth, 10.1% and vac uh, current vacancy rates of one6 and then heading into Mildura, we've got a four bedroom, two bathroom, double car garage sold for 390,000, an older property, but a rental price of $490 per week. Only a conservative 3.6% growth in the last 12 months, but vacancy rates of 0.9%. Uh, look, some of the, uh, a couple of tips for heading into some of these regional areas where you are looking at properties that might be slightly older. A tip that I have uh, is that when you're doing your filters online, if you are looking for real estate yourself, um, always filter for a second bathroom is a really good tip. Obviously, to go and add a second bathroom uh, as a renovation is quite an expensive exercise. So a little tip that I use when I'm heading into locations like this, I put on there the second bathroom and it does mean that I can find some listings uh, where I won't have to go uh, looking at putting in extra bathrooms. I do think it helps with your rent and your resale value later. So just a little tip there. Uh, heading into La Trobe Valley, our last one, four bedroom, two bathroom and single car. Um, uh, I don't know why it's saying sale price 168. That must have been a previous sale on the land only, um, but the estimated range was 490,000 and it did transact at 490. 
Rental price, $490 a, a week. So again, for Victoria, quite a good rental yield. Past 12 months growth, 4.2% and current vacancy rates, 1.2%, but it's a massive uh, 920 metre square block there. So obviously opportunities there for subdivisions or any other, um, you know, add, adding a value to the property to, um, to manufacture some growth. So Terry, that's uh, about all I had for the um, you know, looking at real estate. And hopefully that helps people sort of understand what real estate could look like in some of the markets that we've just discussed today. Wanted to quickly move on to our uh, cheapies with prospects reports, where a lot of this data and a lot of the suburbs that we've talked about today, you'll find a lot more research. As a bit of a, a bundle deal that we're doing for our viewers today, you can buy either the city one at $187 per uh, report or regional $187 and a bundle deal at $299. So for anybody interested in that, you'll save $75. Terry, we uh, got time for some questions. We probably ran a little bit over what we were anticipating, but we always do. I might stop sharing there and see if we've got time for some questions. We're just um, trying to impart so much information, so many good prospects. So I think what stood out for me looking at the examples of recent sales that you you gave us is, is how much real estate you get for the price in some of these locations yeah, and how strong the rents are relative to the prices. Many of those places, rental yields 6% and above, um, which is attractive to investors. Please uh, let's, let us have your questions. Um, type them into probably into the Q&A panel. Um, we do have a couple of questions in there already, but please um, give us some more. Um, we might probably go a little bit over time. We generally go an hour for these broadcasts, but we, just to accommodate more of your questions, we might um, just go a little bit over time. Um, so Louis Diana is asking, thanks for sharing the hotspot locations today. Um, we can buy just one of them. Which one would you consider to buy? Yes, that's always the question. Which is the best? Um, honestly, um, which is the best often depends on the individual and their circumstances, their price range, what they already own. Um, but if you're asking me um, to pick one out of all that, it's actually quite hard. I must say, I do really like uh, Toowoomba in Queensland. Um, I think that's a, a really strong regional city. Uh, which is, is going to get stronger because of uh, the infrastructure that's recently been put, but more importantly, what, what's to come. I'm also a big fan of the Geraldton market in Western Australia. I think the potential there um, is very strong. It's one of those markets that hasn't been saturated with uh, with investor interest yet. So potential to get in early on a market that's got potential for growth. Um, uh, Gary is asking... Um, is it possible to get five to 10 year capital growth figures on regional towns? Where would I get this data? You can certainly get um, information on uh, the 10 the year growth average for these places. That, that was um, part of the information we presented for all those locations in the slides earlier. Um, so if you go to either um, your property, your investment property mag, one big word, yourinvestmentpropertymag.com.au. You can key in any suburb and amongst the information that it will give you is the 10-year growth average in terms of growth in the median price. Um, you can also go to uh, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Similar thing, you key in the suburb and it brings you up lots of information, the median price, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and also the 10-year the capital growth rate. Um, it's one of those places that we use just for a e easy, fast access to basic information, give, give us a feel for an area. Mm. What's our reports that we we include in our cheapies with prospects um, reports, the, the bundle that we have available. We have a lot more information than that um, on, on the local economy, um, on infrastructure, on projects, uh, and all the reasons why um, we um, consider those places worthy of consideration. So we've still got a few moments left. So if anyone has any questions, please uh, give them to us uh, by typing into the, the Q&A panel. If you'd like to uh, follow up with, with questions or comments after the event, um, please um, email us. You can get me on rider, R-Y-D-E-R, at hotspotting.com.au or you can reach Tim, Tim at hotspotting.com.au.
Uh, Terry, there's a question in there just in relation to your um, statistics at the start of the presentation. Um, there was a, a difference between prop track and core logic results. Um, they're asking why is there a difference between um, those two um, data ag aggregators? Well, if you got uh, price data from four or five different sources, you get four or five different answers. Right. You should try it sometime. Google, what's the median price for choose your location? And they'll bring up seven or eight possibilities, different sources. They all have different figures. Um, and the reason is that um, what they're trying to do is distill all the, uh, the sales activity in a particular area, like a city as big as Sydney, down to a single figure, how much prices have grown. And it's really a ridiculous task almost an impossible one. They all have different methodologies. They all have different definitions of what's a house and what's a unit. Um, where does Sydney start and end? Um, there's all sorts of differences in on how they do it. And so they come up with different answers. So there's no one right answer. Um, and um, what I often say to people is all real estate data is dodgy data to yeah. a certain degree because what you are... have these differences. What I might add to that as well is uh, for those who maybe don't know, PropTrack is uh, powered by realestate.com. So obviously, um, you know, there's not too many listings that uh, don't go on realestate.com. And uh, in the back end where the the vendor's agent is um, managing that listing, they'll actually, um, you know, even if it has non-disclosed uh, pricing in the back end, a lot of the time that um, figure is in the back end. So I think you, you will probably find, in my opinion, prop track is probably a little bit more uh, reliable because they've got uh, access to the data a lot faster, whereas some of the other aggregators have got to wait for the information from the value of general. Cool. Our question here about uh, our thoughts on Mount Barker hmm. in South Australia. Um, yeah, so the, up in the hills, um, I, I, We've often featured uh, the city of Mount Barker in our hotspots reports. It's, it's worthy of consideration. It uh, offers uh, lifestyle. It offers affordability, but it's only you know thirty minutes from the centre of Adelaide. It's one of the yeah. the um, the features of Adelaide. The, you're up in the hills, but you're, you're only half an hour from the CBD. Um, very easy city to get around. Mount Barker is um, yeah, it's it's one of the growth growth markets of Adelaide, and I think it's got good prospects going forward. Yeah, I think one of the only concerns that people have raised around Mount Barker is whether or not the infrastructure is keeping up with the population there. Um, certainly since COVID and maybe even before that, um, you know, there was certainly that exodus to affordability where people were going out to Mount Barker to relocate from the capital city. But uh, there, there has been, I've certainly spoken to locals in the area that said that the roads have been quite congested and they probably haven't been able to keep up with the infrastructure with the population boom. Yeah, okay. Uh, so Kate um, is asking uh, what industry you think supports the growth in Rockhampton. We you had, we had a sales example in Gracemere, which is one of the the um, suburbs on the on the fringe of yeah. Rockhampton. Look, look, I think Rockhampton's got a um, uh, quite quite a lot of diversity in its economy. It's um, you know, it gets benefit from the resources sector. It's surrounded by major agriculture, and that feeds into the Rockhampton economy, it's known as the, the cattle cattle capital of Australia. Okay. So that's a big yeah. part of its economy. Uh, it gets a lot of tourism um, to Rockhampton itself, but also nearby attractive coastal areas like Yapoon. Um, there's the um, the military activity, which is in the general um, vicinity of Rockhampton manufacturing. So there's a whole lot happening in that area. Yeah. And it's um, it's a growth city for all those reasons, but still very affordable. But whilst it might not necessarily rely so heavily on the resources sector now, it's still uh, a strong player in that market. And what that means is we are getting strong um, you know, rental yields out of uh, the FIFOs. Um, because uh, a lot of them are choosing to, you know, uh, come back in via Rockhampton, but maybe not live right in Rockhampton. Yapoon's another area that a lot of people have sort of relocated to. It's a bit of a, a gentrifying area as well. I think that's a really exciting market. You know, you've got a train line 30 minutes from Rocky to get to the coast. Um, so that's a really exciting market with very strong rental yields. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, we've gone a little bit over time to answer yeah. But um, this might be a good moment to wrap it up. Um, yeah, I'll just quickly share uh, again for anybody that wanted to uh, take advantage of the bundle deal um, there. 
And then uh, also just to let everybody know, we will be sending out a copy of the recording along with a, a copy of this presentation deck in PDF format. Terry, thank you very much for, for having me again today. And hopefully people got a lot out of it. If anyone does want to follow up with either of us, uh, Tim at hotspotting.com.au and Ryder at hotspotting.com.au. Thanks, Tim. Um, hope everyone got lots of great information. We certainly packed a lot of information to that. So um, you will receive a copy of the recording and maybe have a chance to have another look at it at your leisure and, and focus just on the individual slides that are of interest um, and see some of the information and the other reasons why we relate those areas as highly as we do. Terrific. Thank you all. We'll see you again soon.